I haven't done an industry related video in a very long time, but this video is going to be for you. And again, I don't really care if it gets 20 views or ho I hopefully, <laughs> I hope it gets a lot of views and hopefully, you know, you get something out of this, but this video is really targeted towards people who want to either enter into the beauty industry, whether it's a, being a barber or a hairstylist, whether you're currently in it and you feel a little bit lost or confused, but I'm gonna start out this video and I please, please, please would love if you could just watch this whole video through because it's gonna be very valuable and I'm gonna share a lot of things with you that I've learned over the years. Now, I've been in the industry since 1992, okay? Yes, I'm a dinosaur and I've seen it all. I have literally been through the worst of the worst when it comes to uh, putting my time in and paying my dues in this industry. <laughs> and I can tell you stories that would make some of you even cry and not even want to go into, into this business because of what I've went through. Do you or does anyone have to follow in my footsteps? No. However, I do think that paying your dues is probably the most important thing that you can do if you're looking to get into this industry. Now, what do I mean by paying your dues? So you, you wanna go to beauty school, you wanna go to barbering school, whatever it is, paying your dues means, in my opinion, being an assistant or an apprentice. And that is when you will be treated like probably the worst. You'll feel like you're just doing a lot of grunt work. You're, you're doing a bunch of tasks and, tor and chores and things that you don't wanna do. You know, why would you wanna be cleaning toilets? Why would you wanna be cleaning ashtrays, watching out color bowls, doing laundry, sweeping hair, when all you wanna do is just do hair, whether it's cutting, coloring, whatever it is, why would you have to go through the torture of doing all those awful things when in reality you just wanted to be a hair stylist or a barber? Well, you have to see the worst of the worst, and this is, my advice to you, you have to see the worst of the worst to understand what the best is, okay? Whether it's working in the worst salons you've ever seen, the worst barber shops, the worst of the worst, in order for you to appreciate and know what the best is. I literally worked in the worst places I could ever work in early on in my career. It was torture, I couldn't take it. I had a mentor and he, he would suggest these places to me purposely, knowing that I have, I'd have a lot of challenges and really tough you know, things ahead of me, but I got myself through them, and I did that for like four years until I just couldn't take it anymore, and finally he said, okay, you're ready. I was like, ready for what? And, and that was a whole other thing of like, what I had a goal in mind, I wanted to do what he did, and that was working for L'Oreal at a very young age, so by the age of like, I think I was 21, 22 maybe, I was working for L'Oreal because I had paid my dues. So next thing you know, I'm some young kid in a suit representing the largest beauty company in the world. I had to go through the worst of the worst before I could even understand what people were thinking. So my opinion and my suggestion is find a place and yes, sweep the hair. Yes, do the laundry, do all of those things that you may need to do. And if they put you through that program, don't fight it, don't argue with them, uh, and then pay your dues. Now, let's transition into, and I've seen this countless amounts of times, and please, if you're in this position currently, let me know in the comments below, because I've seen this, uh, and it's awful, where a, an individual is held hostage, prisoner, and they're doing grunt work for year one, year two, year three, and they're, they're going to beauty school, and they, or they've been going to beauty school, and they graduated, and the owner keeps promising them, oh, I'm gonna you know, send you to education, and I'm gonna train you this, and train you that, and you're gonna be this, and like they're giving you one haircut to do a year, or it seems like you're not progressing at all. Then you have to start to really cut the cord loose and find another place that's gonna advance you like you deserve. You should not be an assistant for longer than maybe a, two years, okay? Now I'm talking a, an apprentice, a proper apprenticeship uh, is when you are actually being trained while you're doing all your normal day-to-day -day tasks 
sweeping, laundry, all that stuff. And, but at the same time, you're having like weekly trainings and the end goal is to get you onto quote unquote the floor. That's what, that's what they all call it. Let's get you on the floor so you can become a stylist and start advancing yourself in your career, start making some decent money and seeing clients, which is the whole goal of what you want to want to do in the first place. Okay. If you're stuck in a place that after year two, year three, you're just doing all the, you know, oh my God, how many color bowls can I wash? I'm tired of sweeping hair. And they just tell you, oh, come watch, come watch, come watch Mary cut hair and watch Mary do a roller set for three hours. It's like, okay, I can't take this anymore. So if you feel like you're in a position where you're stuck, you have to get out and find a place. You have to do the research. Don't just go to any salon. Now let's start to transition into like, what's the best salon for you? And, and what's the right salon? You need to interview salons. When I was looking for a salon, my mentor, the one I told you who put me through living hell, made me interview 75 salons. And I'm not kidding. I had a, I think a month time frame or two month time frame or something like that, where I had to interview 75 salons, rate them from one to five, and then narrow down like the final you know, top five and then the top two and then pick the one. And I had to do that and present it to him and explain to him why I picked the one that I picked out of the 75. I picked the one that I decided to work in and he knew the place. He goes, this will be a great place for you. What's shocking though is I went now I'm on the East coast. I went to all like tons, at least a dozen, of the top big name salons in Manhattan. I learned so much just from watching them operate. It was like almost like getting an MBA in like the beauty industry. Like I could not believe what I saw just going into these big name salons and, and watching the, the workflow. And it was so different, so different than what was happening back home here in Jersey. I was like, Jersey is a joke compared to what these people are doing in Manhattan. So anyway, I interviewed salons in New Jersey, salons in New York, rinky dink salons, little tiny salons, complete disasters, like from, you know, high end, super big name salons, big money to finally out of the 75, I narrowed down to one. Do you have to do that? No, but I would do at least say 10. You have to commit to yourself. If you're, if you're investing in your, in your career, in yourself, you have paid all this money to go to beauty school. You have to go about these steps in order to find the right place to work in that's going to help you grow. Okay. Interview other salons. Don't just pick one interview, like 10 of them, rate them from one to 10, ask them questions. What are you going to do for me? All right. What are you as an owner, as a business, how are you going to help me grow? My goal is I want to be a full-time stylist on the floor, building a clientele within a year to a year and a half time. What type of training program do you have? Like who's doing the training? What kind of tasks can I do? Do you have a social media team? Like chances are when you start going to these salons, they're going to look at you like, huh? Like they're complete morons. They're absolute whack jobs. These owners have no clue what they're doing. They just want to hire people, throw in bodies on the, on, in the place to just sweep hair and wash. Half of them aren't even in the industry. They're unlicensed. It, it's a complete disaster. Don't become one of those people. Okay. And don't work for a company like that. So I know this is, I'm just literally spewing all this out, like off the top of my head, because it's stuff I've seen and experienced over the last, you know, century or so. But, uh, so the next thing is, is this the right industry for you? What do you do if you're unsure? You know, I recently am retired from taking clients. I just don't want to take clients anymore. Uh, I, I'd be charging and have, have to charge hefty, hefty fees for a haircut if I wanted to continue or start seeing new clients. And I'm not talking 50 bucks. I'm not talking a hundred bucks. I'm not talking 200 bucks. Keep going up because my time is become so valuable. Uh, and when you know what you're worth, especially even hourly, it's like, that's what you're worth. Okay. And that's why I just, I want to focus on making content, my product business and a lot of people, right. I made a post about it. Uh, and 
a lot of people were like, congratulations, I'm, I'm very jealous, I, was, I wish I can do that. And, but at the same time, I've been building up the Salon Guy brand for like 14 years, okay? So I, I started this journey a long time ago and I just never gave up. A lot of people have, you know, the what if syndrome. Oh, what if I did this? What if I did that? Oh, what if I did this? Or, you know, it's just, you're ifing all the time. Stop ifing. So I just never gave up. I was persistent, passionate, even to this day. I post videos five days a week. I have over a million subscribers. A lot of my videos are, they don't get that many views anymore, uh, but some of them do. I'm, I, you know, it's like the same thing, how to grow your hair faster, how to get this, how to do, it's like the same videos everyone wants to see. I have my frustrations, but I just don't give up because I want to keep sharing information. This video may be an absolute dud. It may get like a couple thousand views, if that, because I'm not posting a video of how to have a better jawline in 10 minutes. You can watch all the other YouTubers like in, the, in this space who are trying to do that. I don't care about that because that's ridiculous. I want to share valuable information especially if you're in this industry. Should you be working in a hair salon? Should you be working in a barber shop? Should you go out on your own? Now, use me as a prime example. I started this 14 years ago. I was one of the first people in the salon industry to start creating content like this on YouTube and going out and creating a name for myself, building a brand, being a media personality, being on camera, then being on television and vice magazines. It just kept, you know, like expanding and expanding and growing and growing because I never gave up. You, and as you can see, loads and loads of other people now in this industry have YouTube channels. Even like the pair of scissors they use have a YouTube channel. Like it's ridiculous how many people, whether you're a barber or a stylist, have YouTube channels. So obviously you have the opportunity to create a brand for yourself like I did and I continue to do where literally I turn away dozens of people, new clients a week that wanna fly in from wherever, or fly me out or come in this, I mean, literally I turn away thousands of dollars of business a week. I know you're probably like going crazy, like you're trying to find one client. Meanwhile, I'm turning away dozens. It's just because that's not where my passion is right now or anymore, okay? But if you still wanna grow and Hopefully you do, you wanna grow your business, you wanna grow a brand for yourself. You have more opportunities to do things on your own than anyone else is going to do for you. Now, I've worked for big companies like L'Oreal and Paul Mitchell, and I decided that they're not gonna do for me what I'm gonna do for myself. I don't wanna be famous or big because I'm working for a company. I wanna do it for myself, which is the hardest thing to do, it takes a lot of courage, one of the driving factors was when someone told me, oh, because you're not gonna be so-and-so, you're probably never gonna make it. You know what? I'm gonna prove you wrong. And to this day, I've proved that person wrong and I've made a name for myself. And that's all because he, you know, that person told me, oh, you'll never make it because you're not, gonna, you're not so-and-so who works for a big company. I'm like, all right, what's that guy doing now? Like he wrote off that company and <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm writing off of myself. You know what I mean? I'm not, fam I'm not big or famous or successful because of another company. Like, I'm doing this for me. You have the opportunity to do this for you. And if you're gonna do it, it's gonna be a long journey, it's gonna be a painful journey. You have to be very, very patient. You have to not give up. You have to be very clear with what you wanna do. You have to stay focused. You have to give up a lot of, you know, make a lot of sacrifices, stop hanging out with certain people, break up with that boyfriend or girlfriend who's draining you, who's just a leech. Get rid of all the wasteoid people in your life. Be very selfish and focus on you. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what I've done. That's what I continue to do. And I'm just you know, trying to share this information so that you can get some value out of it. I know this is a longer video, but I really, really, really hope that you get value from me just literally talking to you. There's no script. There's no, I'm literally just doing this off the top of my head because I'm so passionate about it. And you know, if you're someone say you want me to come do a talk, I love doing talks, I love doing public speaking, motivational stuff, whatever it is. Um, you know, I have char I charge fees for that too. So, <laughs> you know, but I've had people reach out to me saying, hey, how would you like to do, you know, a keynote for us or do a little business building or motivational stuff. I love doing that stuff. So if you're interested, leave me a comment and, uh, you know, I'd love to talk. But let me know in the comments below if you found this video helpful 
I don't care. If you were paying me a ton of money to give you advice, I would tell you the same thing. I'm giving you advice that is worth, it's like, there's no price on it, right? There's no price tag on this information because it's so valuable. Um, and, you know, I hope you got something out of it. So let me know in the comments below. Thank you. Best of luck to you. If you have any questions, let's discuss them. I'll see you soon.